The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Rude, Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com. Happy Independence Week. A cold front is scheduled to move through our region tomorrow, providing much needed relief from the recent heat wave, which had some anglers seeking shelter and air conditioning rather than fishing. The weekend promises to be much cooler and there should be plenty of good fishing opportunities. On the East End, Maureen at Gone Fishing Marina said the striped bass splits kicked off Friday night, last Friday night, continued through the weekend with the best action on the flood tide. Loads of big bass were pulled from the rips out in front of the lighthouse, and she weighed in fish up to 51 pounds with lots in the 40 pound class. Live eels have been the ticket. Captain Scott Leonard of Top Gun Sport Fishing had a 53 pound bass in the fog yesterday to celebrate the holiday. Bottom fishing for porgy, sea bass, and fluke has ranged from fair to excellent depending on the day and the conditions. Captain John on the Shinnecock Star let us know that the skinny water bite in the bay is still going strong with lots of limits and fish to 8 pounds. On the North Fork, Captain Mike of the Primetime 3 said the night bass bite has been red hot with fish to 40 pounds, while the day bite has been a bit inconsistent with smaller fish. But there's also lots of sea bass and fluke to keep those rods bent, and they've been fishing around the Gardner's Island area for those fluke and sea bass. On the South Shore, the ocean reefs and wrecks are turning out lots of sea bass, some nice big knob heads being caught. Here's a nice one sent in from Nikki Fishing Girl. Hearts Cove and Mariches Bay produced some lively fluke action with fish to nine pounds reported from that area. In the Great South Bay, it's all about the tide or more specifically the current. Fluking has ranged from good to very good on the last couple hours of the incoming and the start of the ebbing current. Captain Al Lorenzetti reported cleaner water has moved in along with a new body of fish and crabbing is off to a great start at the local docks. Bill Witchy at Combs Bait and Tackle said the best fluke action is still in the Bay and Inlet with a good bite underway from the Wantar Bridge to the Jones Beach Piers and the Meadow Brook to the Inlet Jetty. Lots of shorts keep the rods or keeping the rods bent, but some nice keepers to six pounds in the mix. Limit catchers of sea bass are also being made in places like Atlantic Beach Reef and the McAllister Grounds. Good numbers of ling are also being reported on the ocean wrecks. Further west, Jerry at Bernie's Bait and Tackle and Sheep's Head Bay told of lots of porgies in the bay and inlet, and Captain Bob Wiegand on the Lady Flamingo has been seeing consistent action of bluefish of mixed sizes off of Sandy Hook, Raritan Bay, and Rockaway Inlet. Porgy fishing remains red hot all over the sound, and the action is being spiced up by a good number of sea bass in many areas. Also, quite a big striped bass in the 30 pound class are coming from Manhasset Bay and the Huntington area on bunker chunks. Carmine at Campsite Sports at Huntington reported that fluke fishing has been solid this week with good numbers of three to eight pounders in places like the brush pile off of the golf course and inside of Sand City. Chartreuse and white gulp along with whole squid have been producing the bigger fish. Now let's go to Hawaiian Dan and find out what he was up to this week. Thanks, Tim. Aloha! Hawaiian Dan from TalkFishTV.com reporting for the fishermen. This time in and around the inlets, bays, harbors, and coves in my kayak. And let me tell you, there's plenty of life to be found. Now, my night fishing didn't really work out for me. Probably wrong place, wrong time, but as it rolled into the early morning hours, man, it was on like Donkey Kong. Bays and the harbors are completely flooded with grass shrimp. So find yourself a bottleneck, a point, some kind of structure that funnels all the bait fish to it, and I promise you'll have tons of catches. You'll see from the clips, I had tons and tons and tons of schoolie stripers. So much fun. Also an occasional fluke, porgies, and of course that pesty old sea robins. Listen, there's no reason for not bending a rod other than you need to get off that couch, get out there and find your local body of water and get some fishing in. So do us a favor, send in your tips, your techniques, your photos, videos, and reports. And until next week, this is Hawaiian Dan from TalkFishTV.com signing out for the fishermen. Aloha. There was another shot of bass along the South Fork this past week as Southampton anglers found bunker pinned tight to the beach between Cooper's Beach and Meacox. Montauk also saw a few big bass fall to casters highlighted by a 52-pounder from under the light. 
The big fish are stacked in the rip since the end of last week, but just a few strays seem to be working within range of the casters. On the North Shore, chunks continue to produce some fish to 25 pounds, while the presence of sand eels have fueled a good small bass bite in places like Smithtown Bay and east to the North Fork. Many South Shore casters have been setting their sights on fluke as the bass action has dwindled, and some quality flatties too, including fish to 7 to 10 pounds. Shorebound anglers this week chunking along the ocean front have seen a slow pick of blues and bass, but the increasing number of dogfish and rays and sharks have been in the mix to make the action a little more lively. The bluefin bite at the Bacardi seems to have slowed as a good portion of the whales and other life has pushed east towards the Cumbria. Look for the fleet, but there's no need to fish in a crowd. There is so much life around that you'll probably find fertile waters well ahead of arriving. Keep an eye out for whale spouts and birds. The tuna bite has been early morning and again in the afternoon with bluefins taken south of the Cumbria and as far east as the Ranger. The Hudson continues to produce yellows and some big eyes with yellowfin pushing northwards towards the Texas Tower. When you're out there, you might as well try tile fishing. Check out this 63-pound golden tile caught by Captain Larry on the ocean view. Sharking has been solid for makos and threshers along the 20 fathom line. Now, let's hear from Fred Galifaro with some news on some upcoming tournaments. Hey, if you like your fluke fishing and are looking to spice it up a bit, July features several fluke tournaments, beginning with the first annual Center Yacht Club Fluke Tournament in Santa Mariches. That's a week from Saturday on July 14th from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And you can fish from land or boat. The entry fee is $35 per adult. And you can also register two junior angles at just $5 each. There's cash prizes for first, second, and third place and trophies for the junior winners. Weigh-in is 5 to 6 p.m. with a barbecue following the fishing. And if you want to fish from a boat, don't have access to one, don't forget the rosy sails out of Center Yacht Club. You can pick up entry forms at the Marina office located at 222 Old Neck Road in Center Mariches, or you can get more info at www.centeryachtclub.com or call 631-874-2200. <clears throat> Molner's Landing is rolling their two annual fluke shoot shootouts into one super summer fluke shootout, and that takes place on Saturday, July 21st at Molner's in Hampton Bays. That means bigger cash prizes, more raffles, bigger Calcuttas, and a super barbecue party with live music. Entry fee is $75 per angler. There's a junior division for kids under 16, that's $25 entry fee. And there's a mandatory captain's meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Friday, July 20th at Molnes. Call 631-1860 for more details on that one. Later in the month, there's a 17th annual Mariches Anglers Fluke Tournament, and that's on Saturday, July 28th. And the 11th annual KFC Fluke Rodeo on Sunday, July 29th at Marine Max in Lindenhurst. We'll have more details on both of those as we draw closer, or you can always check the Fisherman's Calendar of Events. Next week, we'll be at ICAST bringing you the latest in fishing gear and innovations. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube page, and be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest. Until next week, this is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com.